but I ended up tearing my ACL in my last possible year to uh, get a scholarship. The surgeon told me, yeah, your season's done, like you won't be playing anymore. I got into the elevator to leave with my mom, we just broke down. Because it, it literally felt like my dream was dying. Hi, I'm David Thompson. I go to the University of Toronto. I play on the varsity hockey team and you're watching Undressed in Jersey. Why? What's up everyone? Uh, just while I'm editing here, I give you a little context. What you're about to watch is the entire raw interview that we did together. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for clicking on this video. It means the world to me that uh, you guys are watching this. I think you're really gonna enjoy the interview because uh, David and I touched on some great stories of both of our paths uh, through sports. Um, so if you could please, please, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe to this video, it, it would mean the world. It just, it helps me uh, keep, keep doing what I'm doing. So hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess a little bit more about me is I, I played basketball at the University of St. of X. Just graduated last year, so I've been a year out now. Um, okay. And then uh, I moved over to London, England before all this uh, corona stuff, and now I'm back home just waiting okay. it out. But um like i said man this is the, you're 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 the real you're the real one i think. yeah i just i just kind of like mapped out uh where i started and where i am now um so i don't know if you're familiar with the whole like hockey uh scene how you end up in university not but, at yeah, all, so, not all, at all so i i can i can tell you so like that's um i'm sure i'm sure you're aware of like the major junior leagues like the ohl the the quebec but, major junior league yeah, I grew up in a small town here in uh, Nova Scotia, so it was nowhere near basketball. It was it was hockey central, so all my friends were hockey. And yeah, so they they've all gone through the system where where I'm sitting here and I can't I don't okay. even skate on ice, right? So like, <laughs> yeah, so like yeah. that's that that's kind of my level of expertise when it comes to it all. Um, yeah. But I def your background and and specifically like let's take it all the way back to when you first started playing hockey. And, yeah. and how how you got into the sport? Uh, well, I started playing hockey when I was probably three or four. Uh, my dad played when he was a kid. He uh, he played AAA, so highest level as you can play in minor hockey. Um, he played in Toronto. It's actually, the same organization I ended up playing for, Toronto Nationals and Domino Flyers. So I got into it from my dad. Um, I also have four cousins that are involved in hockey. I had a cousin that went over to Pennsylvania and played uh, Division Three hockey there. Uh, um, so it's it's kind of just been around uh, growing up in Southern Ontario, you know, hockey is, you know, the sport. It's what everybody mm -hmm. plays. So um, that's kind of how I got involved in it to start. Nice one. And then, and then was there a specific point in time where you knew that the hockey was something you wanted to pursue at a high level? Yeah, I think every kid, you know, growing up always wants to be that pro athlete, right? You want to play in the NHL or, for you, for your uh, story, you want to play in the NBA, and um, I, I think I've never lost that. I think I've always had that, um, that goal in mind to play at the highest possible level. Um, I'm sure once we get into my story a little more, there, there's times where, where I started to struggle with that idea and start to doubt myself. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think even as a kid, from when I first stepped on the ice, I always want to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? That's the hometown mm. team. You, you always want to, yeah. yeah. See all see all my all my hockey friends like my best friends they were all it was I feel like in Canada it was always Toronto versus Montreal Montreal yeah 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 and so by default I have to be a Habs fan because all my friends were just Habs <laughs> Habs 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 even though yeah, I yeah. can't name a player on on the team <laughs> um, but but you're right man like for me playing basketball it, it, or to, to be honest with you, the more features and stories I do, it, it always tends to be like people start their sport because of a family member, like a father or a mother or whatever. Um, and then, like you said, it, it's just always been that dream to compete at the highest level, especially yeah. if you're good. Obviously, some kids like die off and be like, hey, this sucks. I'm not yeah. having fun. Yeah. Um, but for me, to give you more backstory of me, Growing up in that small hockey town, I knew that if I wanted to go anywhere with basketball, I had to get out of there. And yeah. and I ended up going to the States uh, boarding school to play prep basketball in Vermont. 
Um, okay. I was I was I was doing a little bit of research bec- uh, on, on you, and I saw that you lived in the states as well. I did. I uh, so I played two years of junior hockey here in Canada in Burlington, which is in Ontario. Um, so it was just local junior A league. I was doing really well, and I had some talks with some Division One programs. Um, but the thing with certain leagues in Canada is you're kind of restricted to who sees you and what programs see you. So, 100%. you know, like yourself, I, I felt like, okay, I need to move to a better tier two league. Right. Um, so I went to, it's called the North American hockey league, the NHL. And I played in the South division uh, where I was, was about two hours from San Antonio. It was like five hours Great. from Mexico. So oh, it was geez. very, uh, yeah, very far south. Shot. It was, Exactly. It was very different, but uh, I lived with a great uh, Billup family and it, it was honestly, it was the greatest life experience I've had today, for sure. I agree. I, I always, I always bring it up as a uh, university or college. People always say like, you know, these are going to be the best four years of your life. But to this day, I still argue that my high school years or the, the four years that I went away for school was the best because you're, yeah, you're experiencing something totally new. You're on your own. You're meeting people you would never have met. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's yeah. a, it's a whole experience. Yeah, no, for sure. It grew, it grew me. I would say more as a person. Um, it was just like you said, you're, you're on your own for the first time, you know, you're meeting all these new people. And for me, it was like the first time you're trying to really find yourself and where you fit on a team you know, without the, the parents there, without any other external factors. So um, it was it was great because, you know, that's when I really started to, like, experience these, like, negative, like, like doubtful mm. situations. And, and it grew me a lot. And it's it's shown with my success this year. With, uh, uh, when, when you say, like, negative, like, you're starting to get into a headspace that you, because you're facing, like, discomfort, and you're facing being yeah. away from home, away from family. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, you, did you find that that might have motivated you more in your sport? Absolutely. So, I, I was never drafted in the Ontario Hockey League. A lot of, a lot of kids in Southern Ontario, that's your goal. It's to, you want to play in the OHL, you move from the OHL, you play in the NHL, right? And uh, as I'm sure all sports are, I'm sure basketball is, hockey is very label-like oriented. So a kid who was drafted in the OHL ju- uh, Junior A team is going to take him most likely because of that label of a status, right? So I, I didn't have that status, quote unquote. So I always, like, I always was doubtful of my abilities in situations where if I was playing against guys who were drafted, let's say, or who were already on a junior team it was kind of like okay you're not good enough blah 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 and then that starts just spiraling right I think when I went to Corpus and played in Texas Corpus Christi was the name of the city by the way uh, when I went there and played there that's when I first kind of nipped it in the butt and was like who cares like about this label like these stat like that's when I was it kind of got to a breaking point where you know I got had a little bit of anxiety had a little bit of depression and it and I got to a point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired and that changed my career but that, then another roadblock came and that started to add on to it I ended up tearing my ACL in my last possible year okay. to uh, get a scholarship so I, I my D1 dream was kind of that's it so now the major like routes to get to the NHL the common paths are you play in the OHL or for kids from Nova Scotia it's the Quebec Major Junior League you go from there to the NHL and or it's to play division one those are your two routes so now I'm a guy who hasn't played either one um so Mm -hmm. I kind of use that like coming from behind attitude to motivate me right so yeah it's uh I'm I'm starting like I've experienced too as, as as soon as you begin to free your mind or free yourself from these pressures or societal or status views that's when you can be you can just literally just focus on your craft and your sport. Absolutely. For me playing basketball, there was no chance in hell to go to a high, like my, my end goal was I wanted to play D1. I wanted to play March Madness. I wanted to be Duke Duke university on TV uh, in the tournament. And yeah, coming from Nova Scotia, like even, even coming from Ontario and Canada as a whole, it's getting better, but Nova Scotia, 
like there's no chance in hell because like you said in order to be seen you need to be in a particular place like no one's coming to nova scotia to recruit for d1 yeah. So yeah yeah that's when i knew i had to go i had to go to the states and then i definitely i was there were a few other players that from nova scotia that also went to the states so we, we were all kind of trying to do the same thing so my biggest yeah. challenge was to not compare myself to those yeah. other those other guys absolutely and as soon as i got to the point where i stopped worrying about them and started focusing on me that's when i started climbing the quote-unquote ladder and accomplishing things and this and that yeah um blah, 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 blah. okay let's touch on uh so so after texas was that high school so like how does uh, that for work? hockey yeah no problem so for hockey you have three years oh, for all ncaa but hockey players that seems to be the the route is you have three years after hawk uh high school end to get a division one scholarship so junior hockey, whether that's the OHL, like major junior, the OHL, QMJHL, or junior A, it's all 16 to 20. So mm. that in the league I was in, in the North American League, uh, it's very hard to play in as a 16, 17-year-old. So it's predominantly an older league. Okay. So a lot of a lot of 19, 20-year-olds, and then 18-year-olds, there's a few. But yeah, there's virtually no uh, younger guys. So we were all out of high school. It was just strictly junior hockey. Basically, it was a pro organization. We got uh, like I would say five to six thousand people a game. We were they used to be a pro organization, so you know we had we had our own trainer, our own gyms. We had all our physio. Everything was taken care of. Um, and yeah, it was just it was like I said, it was a great life experience. But that year that I went there, I had a pretty decent year with all considering with all the like mm -hmm. we talked about with the status issues. Um, the next year I went back and I had really worked on my mind that summer. I, w I mentally wanted to get stronger. Um, like you said, I wanted to focus more on myself, more on my development. Mm. And then first week of camp, um, I had a division one school, uh, Alaska Fairbanks was coming to watch, coming to watch me specifically. So I wasn't supposed to play in an exhibition game. My coach, right. because of this put me in um, and like it was the right thing for him to do. I ended sure. up, uh, I ended up tearing my ACL and that's, and I missed my whole last opportunity to really get that scholarship. So it was, uh, it was very tough. And, and what was that in your final year of uh, the North American yeah. Hockey League? Yeah. So I played, so 16, so you get drafted at 15 in the Ontario Hockey League. I didn't get drafted. I played another year, AAA minor hockey, had an okay year, didn't really have anything going on. Um, and then up playing two years in Burlington all of a sudden I, I got I went to this camp that my brother's coach was like hey you should go to this like junior a exposure camp type thing this team wants to see mm -hmm. you and then Burlington ended up seeing me so I played two years there and then two years well so one year I played but I was supposed to play two years in North American League so gotcha. my last my last year of junior hockey which would have been my 20 year old year was when I had my torn ACL so I was very optimistic I was mm -hmm. you know okay, it's not that bad, blah, 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 whatever. Like doctor, the doctors didn't really say anything right away because they knew the situation. They know like this sure. is kind of his like last shot type thing. Right. Um, so I was, I was optimistic. And then when I went back home to Toronto, um, I was lucky that my roommate in Corpus was Blake Coffey, who's Paul Coffey's son. He's Hall of Famer. Okay. Um, and he ended up getting me a doctor's appointment with uh, an ex-Leafs doctor. So when I went to see him and then I saw the surgeon and the surgeon told me, yeah, your season's done. Like you won't be playing anymore. I got into the elevator to leave with my mom. We just broke down because it, it literally felt like my dream was dying. Like it just felt like that's it. It's done. Right? For, for sure. And especially when you go through all these, these challenges and everything seems to be lining up and, and, and going in the right direction and you're away from home and, and you're putting in all this work. And then all of a sudden there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. It just, yeah. it just is the way it is. And like, like I said to you, those are the common paths is D1 or the OHL. And mm -hmm. for me, it was like, okay, I haven't played either. Like, how am I going to get to that goal? Right. That as a kid, it's like, like it's all labels in the sense of like, you know, a kid, a uh, scout will take a kid because he's drafted, but it's also like a kid viewing like, okay, this is a, this is a label for success in hockey. It's how, how are these guys getting to the NHL division one or OHL? So now I had none and it was like, now what am I going to do? And I, I really didn't have 
like I knew U Sports was good, and I kind of had it in the back of my mind, like, okay, if, if I don't if I don't get a, co- a scholarship, like that would be something I'd want to pursue. Um, and now even more so, I'm just like realizing like that's probably some of the best hockey. Like it's it's definitely the most underrated hockey and. Like, you know, people have no idea. Right. And and, and then uh, <laughs> that just goes to show the, like, it's the same as universities, like uh, the Ivy League school, Harvard, this and that, whatever. Um, but people are overlooking these other leagues that have great talent. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that changing at all? Like, is the fact that these, as the traditional paths to the NHL, D1 or OHL, is that changing at all with now with the U-Sport? Um, I think that like it's always there. So with OHL and like the major junior leagues, they give players school packages to play at Canadian, like to play in new sports, right? So okay. all of our majority of team at University of Toronto are have some sort of major junior experience, where the, whether it's one year or you know my winger, who's a phenomenal player, Joe Manchurk, he won a Memorial Cup with Oshawa. He he played four years, I believe, with the Oshawa Generals. That was all his junior hockey was with them. Um, you know, they get a certain school package where, okay, this will pay for your tuition, blah, blah, blah. So depending on where they live, I believe, they get a certain amount of money that'll pay for their yearly school, whatever program it is for an arts and science. So um, I think I think that kind of, uh, in, I don't want to say incentive, but that kind of uh, program they've established helps you sports because now you're getting top players from the OHL who – maybe didn't get that pro opportunity right away and need a couple of years to develop. And there's also, I think the difference with youth sports and NCAA is that NCAA, as I'm sure, you know, there's all these amateur rules, so you can't set mm-hmm. money, blah, 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 all this stuff. Right. Whereas you sports, you, we get guys who play in the American leagues, play in the East coast. Like these are, you know, mm-hmm. one, two steps away from the NHL who come back and play. So it's, it's really good hockey. Like we, we didn't get to play division one team this year, but last year we played division one team. We beat them four enough. So the, the hockey is yeah. very comparable. Like I think your top division one programs, like your Michigan's, your Ohio States, your, you know, all those, they're great. But I think a use, any, a top U sports team to mid pack U sports team, is, you know, competes with division one hockey as a whole, for sure. Interesting because I, I and I've always had that question too, because for basketball it's you can say like looking at Carlton Carlton being the best basketball team or program right now like they've yeah. had they've had games against D1 but any other team in the country goes against a division 1 team in the states it's yeah. it's it's a joke it's just, yeah. just 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 to say it like that but so yeah. i've always i've always wondered because canada is known for hockey where where the states aren't aren't as much it it would surprise yeah, me if it weren't better let, yeah, for sure. It's um, it's tough because how they structure some of the junior A leagues in Canada kind of forces kids to leave and pursue other options. Like, you know, for me going to the North American League or I, I would say the best league uh, in Canada is the BCHL, British Columbia League. Um, okay. That's They get a lot of Division One scholarships. And I think the way they structure their league and promote their players is really good. And especially in Southern Ontario, I mean, I might be a little biased because I'm from here, but like the Toronto area, Southern Ontario is a very uh, talented hockey pool to, to take mm-hmm. kids from. Um, so I think a league like the OJHL should be, you know, a little bit better than it is, but because sure. of how they, they, I guess, conduct their league, it, it's not. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. That's a whole other issue, but for yeah. sure. Um, okay. So, so you're in the elevator uh, after the doctor's appointment. Say, all right, you're toast. What's what's yeah. going through your mind, and 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 what like what's your next step going forward? Like, is your dream crushed? Uh, fuck hockey, this sucks. Yeah. Or is it like, all right, no, I'll just do this. I don't think I ever had like a like a screw hockey type feeling. Uh, I was I was devastated though because it felt like. I, it felt like the road just got a lot harder. I think I think a lot of kids would kind of see that as a okay, my dream's completely done, and I mm. I had a little bit of that, but I I've always been a person who like just does what he kind of has to do, regardless of whether I think it's gonna work out or not. You know what I mean? I just 
I've always been like a, a regimented person. It's just, okay, this is what I have to do, you know? So the re- that day, like I said, I got in the elevator. Me and my mom kind of just looked at each other and we just, we started crying. We, I hugged her and it is what it is. I, I told her like, you know what? It's a crappy situation, but this is, these are cards I'm dealt with. I got to, I got to deal with it. So that day we went home. We kind of, we kind of used that day as a, as a mulligan and just salt. And, and then the next day, I, 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 that day I told my mom, I said, look, tomorrow I started my path to rehab. So we went to my physio, we got it all figured out. And then basically every day from the day after I got out of my meeting with my surgeon to the day I came back, I was in a gym somehow, whether it was, you know, doing my rehab or working on my upper body, or, you know, once I was able to kind of walk with a brace and had a little more stability in the leg, I was stick handling, starting to shoot pucks a little bit, you know, obviously following the doctor's orders, but I think work ethic is something people throw around a lot, but it, I think it's kind of underrated in the sense that people don't realize that how powerful it is. Like if you put all you can into what you want to do, like you can achieve anything. A hundred percent. You said you just literally just said it best. And, and the, I can't help to think that the fact that you went away in to, 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 to Texas, you left home, you left your family, you went there, you were able to come, come against all these mental ba- barriers, which then gave you the perspective that you had in the elevator. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Like, like, if you didn't do that, who knows what, like, what kind of perspective you would have had on challenge or yeah. like, you might've had one of those, those feelings that just says, oh, yeah, screw no. this, I quit. Yeah, for sure. Like, like I said, it, it was a, it was a great life experience. Had I stayed in Burlington and played the rest of my junior, I, you know, it would have been at home. I would have been living at home. My parents would have been there. Uh, and, and it would have been easy to, like you said, just kind of shut it down. You got, you got to go through hell to mentally tough. Like you just have like to mentally toughen up. You have to have those, uh, um, what's the word? I'm, like you just have to have that heart in mind. And I wouldn't have had that had I not gone to Corpus. I was, I was watching a live stream of, of uh, the Gary, Gary V. And you know how he's doing like whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you know who he is, but yeah, yeah. someone, someone commented like, just like physical reps, you literally have to do mental reps of, yeah. of doing things uncomfortable. Like it's the exact same. You need to train your brain. Yeah. And that actually, that reminds me. So like the reason I got so like how I train my brain, I would say is, is I would just, it's something as simple as like just being conscious, like having a little bit of introspection where you're looking within yourself in situations and recognizing how you're feeling. So the thing for like, being doubtful like I let fear govern my career for so long right and more like I like Corpus definitely started that but when I got to U of T I really started getting confident and I really started looking within myself and said okay by my nervous here there's no reason to be scared and there were like you know I'm sure you're watching the last dance you're a basketball guy so yeah yeah um, there was there was there was a quote from Michael Jordan. I don't know if it's in the show, but it's something that kind of sticks with me. And, it, and it's him talking about somebody's asking him like, Hey, like, do you ever feel like anxious or fearful out there? And, and he's just like, there's no reason to, I have complete confidence in my skills. I've worked as hard as I can to develop them. There's no reason I should be nervous. And that that's kind of stuck with me now. And I think a big, a big impact on that has been the support of my teammates. Like, um, you know, I started doing well my first year, um, this is at this is at uh, Toronto. This is at Toronto. This at U of T. Um, yeah, it's especially because, like I said, a lot of these guys are major junior guys, and you know they've won Memorial Cups. It, it's it's nice when you have the support of those guys, right? It's mm-hmm. a little bit of validation, right? Um, and then once I started getting that and started being more confident this year, a whole other level. I started really like not caring. It's like I'm stepping on the ice. I'm going to dominate this game. Like there's That's no smart. question about it. And now it's just like, that's just my mindset. And I, I try to really just attack, like, whether it's a workout practice, like do everything to the best of my ability. And mm-hmm. that's all I can do. Um, obviously, I like, I love this stuff, like, because I have all these thoughts. And then to, to hear someone else talk about it, it's just like, damn, that's, that's, that's on point. Um, but without like, because, because I'm trying to make this like a, a, a minute clip, 
obviously I'm going to yeah, yeah. take in everything. Um, yeah. Let's hit on. So you say, okay, now you're on a new level. Your confidence is high. Um, this year you were named OUA MVP all-star and you were an all, all Canadian, you sports all Canadian. Yep. Um, describe that experience uh, of specifically finding out that you were named it, maybe leading up to it and being like, nah, I got this in the bag. Like just touch on that. Yeah. Well, um, so going into this year, uh, so last year I, I led my team in points as a rookie. My bad, my year. bad, my bad. Siri's talking to me. All right. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I led my team in points as a first year. Um, yeah, I had a really good year. I felt good about myself, but I came in this year. I said, okay, you know, uh, I'll set a goal for myself. I want 40 points, 20 goals. Uh, so I came, I came into the year and just played and I wasn't really even thinking about the awards. Uh, I, like I kind of knew they were there in the back of my head towards the end of the year. Sure. I was more focused on just trying to hit that goal. So I, I ended up hitting 40 points. I didn't get my 20 goals, but I, the points was the one I was really um, chasing after. And uh, when I found out, I kind of figured I'd be an all, like a first team all-star. But when I found out that I'd won the MVP, I was, I was shocked. And then, you know, then the first team all Canadian, my coach emails me. I, I, I couldn't even believe first team. Like it, it was just, these things weren't even like, head like I didn't even think that it'd be possible and then I went to Halifax I went to Halifax with my coach because he ended up actually winning coach of the year for U sports okay and uh I was up for U sports player of the year I, I didn't win but that was something too like you know incredible and then OUA male athlete of the year I won athlete of the year for varsity blues like it was just it was one thing after another and it, it was very overwhelming like I was I was I couldn't believe this was all happening and and like it, I it's said, gotta, it, it's, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, like, it's got to be a sense of like, almost like relief to know that, like, even though my path got, got jumbled up and it didn't go the way I wanted it to look at what I was still able to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's finally getting that recognition, you know, like not drafting the O, no commitment, nothing division one. And now it's getting recognition at a level as high as this. And like, you know, like n not comparing myself, but seeing where I am compared to guys who have been in this level at the University of Sport in Canada and have made the NHL. It's like very similar, right? And this, like, this is now me looking at it after the season. This wasn't something I was like, you know, following along with during the year. Like, sure. oh, you know, Joel Ward, who played at UPEI, had three points this night. I should have had, you know, like, it's just, of it's cool to see after and you're just like, you know, you're on the right path. Just, just knowing that I'm on path to my goal is, it's, it's comforting. So. For sure. Um, I want to touch on. Uh, you had the opportunity to play for Team Canada FISU Games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was in Russia. Which is like, yeah. I, have you ever been to Russia before? I had, I had never, and I probably never would have gone. Okay. But uh, right. So just talk on was, that. It was like, that experience. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, so the way they do the FISU games usually for hockey is um, every year each conference picks an all-star team and they send that all-star team because usually the tournament I think is in like January or something. It's a little earlier. It's during the season. So they try and take the best players and, and, and go. Um, the way they did it this – the time I went was uh, they did, it was a little bit later. It was the last three weeks of March, I believe or first three weeks of March, and kind of like the end of the season, the beginning of playoffs. So the way they did it was we'll pick the best players around the entire country who are not in playoffs on the second round. So uh, I, had, I had been told that, okay, you're, you know, you're possibly going to get chosen if you guys don't come, right? So we, uh, we ended up making playoffs. We lost to Ryerson, who's a really good team, and um, – I think two days after we got knocked out, me and our captain, Aiden Wallace, found out we made the team. So we ended up going, and and that that was probably one of the best teams I've ever played on. We had mm. some unbelievable players. We had uh, we had a D, Carl Neal, who was drafted by Vancouver. Um, he just signed pro this year. We had uh, our we had two of the leading scorers in the league, who one of them signed pro, and other he the other guy returned. Like it, it was it was such a talented group and just the fact that, you know, I got to be a part of that, wear the maple leaf, win a medal, not nonetheless. So, and 
you know, these other teams in, in FIZU, like Russia or um, trying to think Kazakhstan, we played Kazakhstan is not necessarily great in normal play, but because we were us in the States were one of the only teams that actually send university players. So Russia oh. sending KHL players who are enrolled in one online class, <laughs> they're going yeah, out and, you know, okay, okay. And the fact that we won a medal is, is pretty incredible. Okay, right? That puts it in perspective for sure. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it's been, uh, like I said, that's the second best league in the world. And, and we were able to compete with them. Right. So. Show and and Russia, Russia in particular, you say like, how was going to that country? Like you said, you probably never would have gone anyway. Like, I love yeah. the I love hearing about the the power that sport has to give you experience. Yeah, just what was, what was your perspective on Russia? Like I don't know, I, I don't know. Uh, it was it was crazy. It was um, it's a unique country, as I'm sure uh, you you think so as well. But uh, yeah. it was um, it, it we were in the capital of Siberia, so we were like really in there. Um, but it was so like every game whether it was russia playing or like, you know hungary or whoever it was was sold out so they were they were really invested in the games and I, it was something like that brought the whole community together and you could see the whole city like kind of come behind this whole thing so it, it was it was really cool to be there during those games because of how the games impacted the country and the city of krasnyarsk where we were Okay, okay. And then let's just do looking ahead. Like what year are you in? Uh at did oh, I'm, you finish this I'm year? going into uh so I'm going into third year. So I just finished second year. Okay, yeah. and you it's four years, right? Or five? Yeah, four year program. Four year. I'm so, gonna do four years, yeah. Okay. Uh so two years, uh which is great because considering that y all Canadian you know, MVP, like, and you still have two years left, yeah. like what, what's going on inside your mind yeah. and what's your end goal by the time you finish university? Uh, well, I mean, this year, you know, especially with all the success I had started having talks for, you know, moving on after this. Um, but there, there's still things I got to work on, you know, like nobody's perfect. There's, there's a uh, aspects of my game that I would like to be better in personally. There's aspects of my game that my coaches have kind of said, you know, to be to have this success at the next level, you need to be better at this. So um, I think me and my coaches, uh, Andrew Dovey, Ryan Medell, they, they've I owe a lot to them. They've given me a lot of uh, a lot of a newfound love for this game again. And I think the next couple of years, we really got to kind of buckle down and focus on certain things like, you know, being really good in the D zone on back checks, knowing who to pick up just these little things that a fan necessarily wouldn't notice, but they make a huge difference in, mm. in the outcome of a game and the outcome of your, in the, like your team success and everything. So I think if I just keep like working towards those things and keep working on them, it, it you know, there's, there's no telling what's going to happen. So. Right. Um, and then how are, how do you, how are you experienced? Because I've, I've heard way too many stories of, of an athlete gaining so much success uh, becoming an all Canadian, becoming the MVP. And then yeah. the next year they just fall off because in their mind, they don't have, they, they, they almost burn out and they, they lose the drive of, okay, I yeah. want to be the best. I want to be the best. And then, you know, you know, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's something as simple, just not being satisfied. I think if you're just like not satisfied with, okay, I won one, but maybe I can win two, you know? And, and for for me, I know a motivator for me is our team hasn't won yet. Like I want to win with the group we have. Mm -hmm, so if, mm -hmm. if we, you know, if I can be a part of a winning team here, that's just that's a bond that I'll have with these guys forever. Right? For sure, so I think that's something I'm I'm really keeping in the back of my mind. And and so is the end goal is the end goal to make the NHL? Absolutely, yeah. That'll. That'll never die. I could be 30, 40 years old still playing. I'm, you know, I'm still going to want to do it. Um, I, I think for me, like in terms of my next steps after U of T, I would like to play in a pro league here in North America, like the American League, if I, if I can um, give, it, give it a year or two and see how kind of pans out. And then, you know, obviously, you know, there's certain windows you have to make these 
these leagues. Sure. And if I get past that window, then I would like to try and go to the top league in Europe and go from there. Mm-hmm. Right? So we'll see. And then for obviously, well, just for like all the parents or the grandparents listening, like say hockey wasn't even in the picture. And I only, I only mention parents and grandparents because, all right, go to school, get your degree. Like, you yeah. know, you might not, whatever, like, uh, what are you studying? And take the scenario of hockey doesn't even exist. What, what yeah. would, would you, would you pursue instead? What would the plan be? Yeah. Um, it, this is kind of tough because, uh, I went into school kind of saying, okay, what degree is going to help me be a better hockey player? Okay. So <laughs> this is, uh, this is kind of tough, but I, so I originally wanted to do kinesiology. Um, I just, I really love fitness. I love working out. So, um, I wanted to do something like that, but as we talked about all these, like all the mental strengthening, that's really helped me in this game. I, I actually am a psychology specialist. So, um, I think post-grad after I'm done hockey, I would like to kind of pursue sports psychology and really help athletes, especially like people like myself who had a similar story where they're going through a tough injury that's, you know, quote unquote, impacting their career um, and kind of help them kind of navigate through that. So I, I, I would probably say either that or coaching something involved. I have to have sports in my life. I know it's, it's, that's a tough, uh, tough answer for the question you asked, but that's, I don't no, know, no, it, who it, I am. Yeah. It, it's it, it's perfect and and I like I said I only did it for for the for the parents listening because man like if if you're already per- performing at this high of a level and you've already made it this far and you've already invested this much yeah man you got to go for it like you just got oh, you got to go all in you got to go have, all in I'm I'm a firm believer in like especially with sports and stuff you really have to just go for your like you only have like cheesy but you only have the one life right like you you have to give everything you can into what you love to do because like growing up that was something that always kind of pissed me off in the back of my head is like when you're going to a grandparent's house and they're like oh what do you want to do and you say you want to be a hockey player it's like oh what's your plan b like well if i work hard enough i don't have to have a plan b you know what i mean exactly it's the worst it's the worst question like education is obviously important and i'm that's why i'm here getting my education but like I can still get this education and pursue my dream. Perfect. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, man, that's, that's it. I, I know, I, I know I started the, the message off like 10, 15 minutes, but like, like I said, I could talk about this stuff forever. You were kind of the first yeah. one. Uh, and I just like, this was exciting for me to have this conversation and kind of pick your brain and just how you, how you think. Yeah, Please. dude, I love, that was great. Is there anything uh, you want to put out on the table or a question or, or anything? Uh, honestly, we touched on everything. Basically, everything I had written out, uh, we kind of talked about. So it worked out. It worked out really good. I, I love what you're doing. This is, this is an awesome, uh, awesome I appreciate it, have. man.